say hi. Say hi, Internet. This is my angry face. You will all pay for this. <laughs> I love you. Here, have some treats. And then we'll give Peggy some because she won't come get them. <laughs> all right, I know. Yes, it was Dottie's turn to get exploited today. You were exploited last week, so there you go. <laughs> See, and then we give them treats and we get forgiven. Oh, okay. This is great. All right. Just don't let it happen again. So, um, this has been kind of a shitty week and it's only <laughs> Monday. I mean, once we're fully annexed by Russia, I'm sure we'll love our situation. I'm sure it'll be great. But, uh, so, so this week I'm happy with some of the stories we have because I, I, I can't not be happy about this. It's one of my favorite things in the world. You said there were monkeys? There are monkeys. Shall we get to the monkeys? Let's do the monkeys. No, no. Phrasing. Phrasing. <laughs> phrasing. Phrasing. Could you crunch any louder, you guys? Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out the wide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, and bring it back here for a little something Crazy. we like to call... What the fuck is wrong with you? And this week, our first story this week comes from Paris. Okay, you don't gotta growl at your sister. I'll give you more. Which you don't have to growl at her. Peggy, come get some more. This you don't have to steal from her. This this makes me so happy that this happened. Um, comes from Paris, France, not Paris, Whoa, Texas. And um, a zoo was evacuated. Oh, honey, you, you put the link in the main chat. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> it's been a week. They can see it, too. Um, a zoo you can was, play along at home. Yeah, a zoo was evacuated when 52 baboons... 52 baboons... They let the monkeys loose. <laughs> in Paris, the Vicente Zoo... It's home to a variety of animals, including a large population of baboons. But on Friday, all 52 baboons escaped their enclosure. How? Prompting zoo happen? staff to evacuate and close the park. I don't know, but someone's getting fired. Seriously, how does this happen? Because when all of the baboons, when all 52 baboons get loose... Someone's someone's got an answer for that one. I feel like this might be some kind of viral marketing by DC Comics. <laughs> the new 52. Uh, uh. Only Superman can save us. The Vicente Zoo emergency plan was triggered as soon as someone noticed an escaped animal. The zoo set up a safety device and informed visitors that animals were on the loose in the zoo, which I'm sure everyone responded to calmly and safely with oh, yeah. nothing resembling panic. Well, have you have you read or seen the second Hunger Games? Yes. You know the part with the attack? I think they're baboons, the attack monkeys. Yes. For like one hour a day, you have like rabbit attack monkeys. That would make me all, I'd be like, oh my God. Baboons it's, are- It's the fucking Hunger Games. Baboons are fucking mean. That... And I mean, they just had Nutella riots in France, so. I mean, if you have a giant red ass, I'm a, I'm I'm thinking you're gonna be kind of mean too. Unless that's what you're into, which is fun. Now here's the best part: after a 17-hour endeavor to catch them, zookeepers caught 49 of the escapees <gasps> in a net. You were three monkeys short. Uh, four, actually. Uh, the Associated Press wrote Friday morning. There minus 49 is three. Well, it says the Associated Press wrote Friday morning there are still four baboons loose within the zoo. Where did the secret baboon come from? All I know is I want those baboons to be free and thrive and breed. I want the baboons of Paris to be a thing. You know that's like a huge problem in India. They have feral monkeys. And we, I think we did a story. They murdered the mayor of a city. Like oh. a bunch of feral monkeys threw him off his balcony. Oh, no. You don't want that. No, no, monsieur. 
We, we do not do the tours anymore. We do not go into the catacombs. No. But why? The baboons, monsieur. Also, this might be how Planet of the Apes starts. Although that might be fine, given <laughs> the state of the world today. I want baboons in maybe Paris. We just give, maybe we should just give them their shot. Yeah, I want. I want be their house pets. I want there to be there be clans of baboons. Like in if Paris. they would let me keep my cats, I, they, yeah, I want just I, let the apes take over. Just, I mean, just give me this. All the other horrible shit going on. Just, just give me these. These. There were Nutella riots in France this week. Did you hear about it? Yeah, because they lowered there was like a the big price. sale on Nutella, and there were fucking like Black Friday Walmart free TV riots <laughs> for fucking Nutella. And now the baboons are loose. Something's I, up in France, man. I want the baboons to be free and thrive, and I want and have them all the Nutella they want, and I want them to fight crime. I want the baboons to fight crime. I feel like given the fact that they're just socialized differently than us, they're more likely to commit crime. <laughs> That's just me. That's what just, the, I mean, I'm not a baboon behaviorist, but... I, I want French crime-fighting baboons. Give me this, damn it. You're starting to sound a little sharks with laser beams on their foreheads. <laughs> Oh, but this this wasn't the only animal-related news we have this week. You and others sent me this one. Oh, for fuck's sake. I, I The absurdity of... This is the very definition of absurdity. <laughs> oh, I just remembered what I said. <laughs> Saudi Camel Beauty Festival. <laughs> Twelve entrants disqualified for Botox use. Yeah. Now, admit it. On the list of sentences you never thought you'd say, that ranks pretty fucking high. In the pursuit of the perfect pout, a dozen camels have been disqualified from a camel beauty pageant in Saudi Arabia for receiving Botox injections. Who hasn't been there, am I right? I mean, the standards of beauty are just, they're tough, man. What distinguishes a beautiful camel is not just height, shape, and placement of its hump. A full droopy lip and large features are essential to achieving camel celebrity status in the multi-million dollar industry of camel pageantry. I'm going to read that. That was the thing. I'm going to read that again. The multi-million dollar industry of camel pageantry pageantry i mean i guess if you think about it i mean we have the dog show that's a big deal every year like new year's day is the big national dog show and it's who's the best boy and you know we have yeah i don't think anybody's botoxing fido <laughs> they might be you don't know like they might have them on peds for the little obstacle course those people are nuts <laughs> and we have you know the kitten bowl like uh, they probably, I mean, there's a lot of camels over there. Again, here's another one of those sentences that is perfectly serious and makes days before it started, Saudi media reported a veterinarian <laughs> was caught red handed performing plastic surgery on camels. And also, like, that seems not safe. Like, I kind of. Just let camels camel, man. I, they don't need your shit. They don't. Why are you? You're, you're fucking. What is? They bo use Botox for the lips, the nose, the upper lips, the lower lops, lips, and even the jaw. They don't. I don't even understand why humans inject our faces with botulism to be prettier. That's what Botox is. Botox is, is botulism. botulism. That's a disease. Right. It's a paralytic because it's poison, yeah. literal poison. It's the stuff if you eat canned food from a rusty can that's been in your grandmother's cabinet for 50 years. That's that's what's going to kill you about it. That's but for some reason, we turn this into a beauty treatment because we're insane. Now, they do also use it as a migraine treatment, and I have heard that it is actually really effective. And penicillin is mold, so I know I'm being kind of puritanical. 
If there's a health issue, fine. Just injecting yourself with botulism to be pretty, I don't understand. I, I work pretty fucking hard to be pretty with middling success. I'm not, I'm not putting nightingale poop on my face. I'm not putting snail slime on my face because that's the new trendy thing, snail slime facials. I'm not injecting my face with poison. Like I heard Gwyneth Paltrow is a great thing you can try. She's putting coffee up her ass now or something. <laughs> like, I, I don't like this is my face. This is what we're working with. I will put 57 products on it. And I promise you guys, I checked. This is a this was not a this, joke this story. Is legit. Yeah. This is for fucking real. And like camels definitely don't need this shit. Yeah, just like camels don't understand beauty pageants. They don't give a fuck what they look like. They're camels. We they are... just want to wander around the desert and be left the fuck alone. It is the 21st century and we are injecting botulism poison into desert mammals to make them more attractive to make money. Yeah, that's that's where we're at as a species. Let the baboons of Paris have their shot. How bad can it be? I've 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 <laughs> said this before, and I think it's probably one of the smartest things I've ever said, even if it's the dumbest thing I've ever said. We are in a cyberpunk dystopia authored by Douglas Adams, is where we are yeah. right now. This yeah. this I I just ah. I just I really feel for those camels, man. They don't need that shit. Well, we've, we've got plain old human stupid for, for a little bit of relief. And this one, we got video. Vidya. We got video. Let's, let's, let's let everybody here before we get into the story, have a watch. Look at, watch this video here. Uh, everybody. <gasps> this comes to us from China. Here. Oh, did you see that explosion there in this uh, electronic store? Do you know what happened? Let's see it again. Watch the guy there. Put a battery in his mouth. And it exploded. Because what happens when you puncture a lithium ion battery? It explodes. See, you know what? You are not a techie by any, by any strip. You don't care about tech. And even you understood. Right. Oh, did you I don't, close the window? That you don't do that. You don't do that. I accidentally closed the window. Damn it. Damn it. Let me reopen like, it. You're not a cowboy and it's not a gold piece. It's, is this real? There we go. Now it's back. I had to, one of my, one of my many retail jobs was I was working at a uh, eyeglass retailer. Hmm. And I had to say the sentence to a grown man, sir, please don't put the lens in your mouth. Because he worked construction and he'd gotten glue all over his glasses and he wanted us to fix it. And I'm like, I don't I don't know what you want us to do about that. And he just sat there, popped the lens out and started gnawing on it to try and get the glue off. And I'm like, I can think of three reasons off the top of my head why that's a bad idea. A shopper in China recently learned that biting a smartphone battery isn't exactly the best way to test its authenticity. No. From why would that tell you if it's real anyway? According to a report from Taiwan News, a man entered an electronic store in China in search of a replacement battery for his iPhone. Seemingly suspecting the battery on offer was fake, he inexplicably decided to bite into the unit to see if it was real. Much to his surprise, the battery was indeed legitimate, as evident by the fact it exploded upon being punctured. Boy, you are lucky you still have a face. Yeah. For fucking real. Yeah, okay, Th this is a problem in China. They do have a lot of counterfeit electronics. They have a lot of counterfeit goods. But if I'm, there are ways you can test. Like, you know what? A voltmeter is a nice way to test if it's a real thing or not. You just positive, negative, hook it on there. Oh, it's it conducts. Okay, it's got, it measured. There's a charge on it. Okay, not putting it in your mouth. Don't you put it in your mouth. Don't you put it in your mouth. What was that commercial when we were kids? I, I, 
it like congratulations it is in fact real you you win they're probably gonna make you pay for it anyway yep but it won't work no so because it exploded Good job. I, you basically might as well have bought a fake one. I have had many problems with little electronic projects I've played with over the years, especially my tube amp. I've had nothing lot... electronic belongs in your mouth. No, I have never looked at something I'm troubleshooting and going, "What's the problem here?" Maybe it'll be solved by putting it in my mouth. That's that's not a to fucking. Like that's that's how Dottie investigates things. <laughs> at least once a day, I have to say, Dottie, what's in your mouth? We because that's how she investigates things. She picks them up and she chews on them we to did, determine we, if it's food or not. We have Loki, Loki and Grady the same. What do you? What do you? Eat? What is in your mouth? And then we have to Peggy go over. Peggy paws it everything. And Peggy rest. better. She paws it everything. Dottie has to lick everything. She learned the hard way not to lick stink bugs. <laughs> I just. But that she's a cat. Her brain is as big. I. Why would you? Why of all the. Well, guess what? It's real. You win. Congratulations. Exceedingly lucky to still possess a face. Yeah, exploding batteries when they explode, they are no fucking joke. It's not a huge explosion. It's not going to take down a building. But it's it's like a good M80 size explode depending on the battery. It's a Even good a size small expo explosion is not good for your face. Well, no. No, that's that <laughs> that tends to be a genuine rule. Explosions and faces, as I understand it, I'm not an expert. He is, but I think he'll back me up. Explosion and faces very rarely get along. Yeah, it's it's always bad. Yeah. Always bad. There you go. Then again, I'm sure you can find 48 videos of somebody shooting bottle rockets in their teeth. Their teeth. Yeah, but that's what we call Darwinism in action. <laughs> Well, our next story comes from Atlanta, and you know what, kids? We might have found an actual, honest to God, psychic. Ooh. Yeah, actual, because he, he made this prediction, and it came true. Waffle House customer, I'll go to jail over some barbecue sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Things okay. got uh, hot at a Waffle House in Middle Georgia this week over a customer's request for barbecue sauce. Early Tuesday, a man sat down for some food at the restaurant on Riverside Drive in Macon. Uh, Willie Edward Drake, 43, old enough to know better, of Columbus, uh, asked for some barbecue sauce. Drake was told the restaurant had none. Things got spicy. Someone is, okay, who wrote this? <laughs> Steve Burns, the Atlanta journal concert. Steve, you're, be ashamed. Um, uh, the man, quote, then began screaming obscenities and insulting the workers, then reportedly added, quote, I'll go to fucking jail over some barbecue sauce. And soon he did. When deputies arrived, Drake was allegedly, quote, uncooperative and disorderly. He was jailed on disorderly conduct charge. Yeah, you know what? When you start screaming that you're going to go to jail over barbecue sauce, people will happily make that happen. Having lived in Atlanta, that's probably a, not an uncommon reaction. It's not their fault that they're like, <laughs> I'm very sorry that you wanted barbecue sauce and there wasn't any. Like, that's fucking rough, man. That's That's tough. And maybe you had a bad day. And that just was the cherry on top of your shit Sunday day. And I'm sorry. Here's the thing, though. It's not the fault of the waitress at the Waffle House. And you just gave her a shit Sunday of a day over something she can't control. And you know what? People who work at a place like the Waffle House have had dealt with enough shit. They are yeah. going to try and talk you down. They are going to try no. and be nice about it. You have given them the option to call the police and make it someone else's problem. And they're going to take it. Like they, I was in an IHOP in Boston after a game one night. We were having afters at IHOP and we were always there with the drunk post club crowd and a bunch of fucking club assholes got in a brawl and it took over the whole dining room and a bunch of us got knocked the fuck over and we lost all our food and it was fucking pandemonium and all of us got shit spilled on us. Tables got knocked over. It should have been on world star hip hop. And just the poor waitresses, like 
It's already 2 a.m. at the fucking IHOP. Like, their situation is bad enough because they're working at the IHOP at 2 a.m. That sucks. Everybody's drunk or freaks. And now they have to, like, remake everybody's food and clean up a riot. Yeah, that's the moment. They, if they are not required to take your shit, if they can take your shit and make it someone else's shit and sort of deliver the shit. They, a keto, if they, you will. They will gleefully do so. Fuck yeah. They don't make enough money to put up with that crap. Because when you said, I will go to jail over some fucking barbecues, you have made it. That, that I could just imagine the, the, the waitress, the wait staff were all just like, did you say you'll okay. go to jail? Oh boy. Thank Hi. you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. What are you scratching on back there? Okay, Jed the Jedi, Jushitsu. Jushitsu. That's what they do. <laughs> you just pass yeah. that shit well, along. I like barbecue sauce too, but you live to fight another day if you don't get barbecue sauce. You won't die. There there is and I'm sure I'll hear about this in the YouTube comments. 47 people will tell me that they have a severe barbecue sauce deficiency and it's a medical thing. <laughs> but there, but it isn't. There is, there is no disease that requires you to have barbecue sauce lest you die. Mm. You'll be all right. You'll make it. I, all right. Our, our next story. This is... This is one of the dumbest things I've ever read. That's I, really saying something. It really is. This is one of the. We've read some dumb shit. This is this is some exceptionally dumb. I, I, this is one of I. This is this is in my top ten. I gotta say. Inmates sneak back into jail after breaking out. And oh. wait till you hear why. Group of Mississippi something. <laughs> <laughs> group of Mississippi inmates busted out of jail this week, burglarized a bargain store, then broke back in and returned to their cells. The jailbirds, identified as Levante Ellington, Travis Baker, Maurice Robertson, and Jacques Williams, broke into the Holmes Humphreys County Correctional Facility by hopping a fence. Once in the clear. The men walked less than a mile to a Dollar General chain store after clothing and swiped anything they could grab. They stole cigarettes, cigarette lighters, phones, and just items they felt like they could sell in jail. Okay. So what they did was... they but broke you got out of jail. They broke out of the jail. They went down the road. They knocked over the Dollar General and they brought the stuff back to sell in jail. But you got out of jail. You got out of jail. Just keep going. You, you won. You, just, you, you, but oh, it gets better. The inmates denied their involvement, even though they were caught on store surveillance footage. I mean, you're already in jail. What are they going to do to you? They'll keep you in jail longer. Oh, they're going to be we'll mad. Do that. They're going to be mad because now you have made the people who run the jail. You have made them fools. Yeah, you made them look like assholes. They don't like that. And you have made the local commerce. They are not happy either. And they are not They are. They will give a shit about the inmates. They're angry at the jail. Because yeah. you could not. I, say, keep... I feel like Dollar General, the people that run the Dollar General, probably aren't paid enough to give that much of a fuck. Nope. Corporate's going to take care of that. They don't care. <laughs> but the people that run the jail that you managed to break out of and back into without them noticing, yeah, that stings. Yeah, they they gonna be they gonna be mad at you, mm. you idiots. I mean, what what the fuck were they getting? I work at Dollar General. Trust me, we really don't. Well, there you go. I mean, what the what the fuck was going to happen here? What you're going to make like what fifty bucks? Oh wow! I don't know what I don't know what the going rate in prison is for things, but just 
keep going. Programming dude. Man, Lucky Logan Lucky sucks in real life. It does. Is that what Logan Lucky is about? Yeah, Logan Lucky is uh not to, not to spoil anything for people. It's a story about a heist and one of the main people in the heist is in jail. They need him for the heist. So what they have to do is break him out of jail, perform the heist and then put him back in jail before anybody notices. Why don't they just keep him out of jail? Because he wants to get out of jail legally. He's he's like two months away from being released legally. But they have to do the heist at a specific time. They don't want to get caught. So they sneak okay. him out and they have to sneak him back in. That's kind of interesting. This is stupid. This is fucking... Because you you're fucking out. I mean, there there is precedent for people that have anxiety after long sentences upon being back out into the world and not having a structure of prison life. I don't think this was that. No, this this was they they thought they, they thought they had a good scam here. They thought this is going to be great. We're going to make so much cash. We're going to be so popular. We're going to be awesome. We're going to be heroes. Kept going. You, yeah, you just bye bye, but and not be in jail. Our but last better than making money in jail. Yeah, you know what's better? Yeah, you know what's better than making money in jail? Making money outside of jail. Not being in jail. Better. All right. Our final bucks is probably better than ass cigarettes. Okay. Our final story this Where's week. Fifty bucks been. Okay. Our final story this week is one you sent again, and other people sent too. And oh boy, we're gonna have to we have to lecture everybody again on this one because this is shit. Maryland man flips truck five times after quote Jesus advised him to let go of the wheel. Not, not, not really a thing that tends to happen. At least they didn't, my catechism didn't cover that. According to the Tennessee Highway Patrol, Chad O. England, 33, was traveling on I-81 North through Sullivan County and was arrested after flipping his truck five times because in his words, quote, Jesus was calling him and advised him to let go of the wheel. Just after 10 a.m. on January 20th, Sullivan County deputies were dispatched to a single car accident near mile marker 73 on I-81 North. According to the incident report, the driver of the vehicle had gotten out and begun to run away, carrying a jar and speaking gibberish, while deputies secured him in the backseat of the patrol car. According to the report, as deputies searched the vehicle, they found 6 grams of marijuana, 0.6 grams of cocaine, a pipe, rolling papers, a three-quarter empty bottle of Crown Royal, a small empty bottle of Crown Royal, several cans used for huffing, and a partridge in a pear, in a pear tree. tree. I was going to say the exact same thing. <sighs> Two witnesses wow. say they saw England speeding on the highway when, for no apparent reason, he left the roadway on the right side. Uh, England also said that he did not take off running. He was, quote, being called and was traveling to bow before someone. He also stated he was not driving, but he was behind the wheel. No, that's still driving. That's yeah. He denied a blood draw, but was obviously under the influence of drugs, according to the incident report. You think? Okay. Little known fact. Maybe 10 years ago, the Vatican actually put out the Ten Commandments of Safe Driving. <laughs> I'm not kidding about this. You can look it up. The Vatican put out officially the Ten Commandments of safe driving for the modern world. Like what good Catholics have to do to be good drivers. This is a fucking thing. You think I'm kidding. Google it. It's a thing. I don't remember the exact list. I know for a fucking fact that nowhere on it is. If you hear the voice of Jesus, run your car off the road. I mean, what? This Jesus is not Logan Paul. He's not gonna prank you. He's not gonna be like, "Hey God, God, he's not, God, call he's the not Holy Tyler Durden." He doesn't want you to prove yourself. 
God. I mean, he does, but not like that. God, call the Holy Spirit in. No, come on, God, call him in. Come in. Watch this. Guys, guys, no, watch. No, it's going to be funny. No, check it. Hey! Hey, you! Yeah, I want you. This is Jesus. How you doing? I, I think you know my work. I want you to take your hands off the wheel. No, it's cool. No, I'm Jesus. I'm giving you. Hey, go ahead. Watch this. Oh, shit, he did it! Oh, God! God, you owe me five bucks. He fucking did it. He fucking here's, did it. Here's a little, another little known fact. When Jesus was walking the earth, they didn't have cars. No, they didn't. Jesus doesn't fucking know how to drive. No, he there does. Was, there was a patron saint of travelers, St. Christopher, but he got defrocked. He got unsainted, because that's a thing that can happen. Yeah. So... Ain't nobody up there gonna drive your car for you. They're yeah, just not. You don't I don't care if Henry fucking Ford is up there. He's not gonna drive your car for you. Jesus never took a road test. He doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. He's not the guy you want to listen to on and this he didn't one. He speak English, so he can't read the signs. That's true. That's true. I just good. Okay. I mean, you got a shot if it's actually God, because he's omniscient. He could probably figure it out. If you're hearing God. You are officially on way too many goddamn drugs. Or your prophet. I was raised Catholic, I have to say. You're on too many damn drugs. <laughs> or maybe he mistook Carrie Underwood for God. Yeah. <laughs> I like I don't I I don't care what Carrie Underwood says. Jesus ain't gonna take the wheel. <laughs> well, it did sound like Jesus was intending to take the wheel. It's just like, no, go ahead and let go. It's cool. No, that's cool. No, trust me. Hey, who are you going to believe? Oh, you're afraid you're going to crash? I got crucified. I just could go. I'm amazed this guy's yeah, alive. St. Christopher got defrocked. People don't know that. That's why you can't buy the little medals anymore. Not only is this guy alive. They unsainted him. Not only is this guy alive, next to unharmed, he got up and tried to run away. Fucking I told you a couple weeks ago. That's why the drunk survived the crash, because you don't tense up, you flop around, and you get way less injured that way. If you're in a crash, you kind of want to be fucked up. Not driving, though. So, yeah, okay, the first, the, first thing we have to, the first thing we have to say this week is Jesus is not going to give you traffic tips. He's, he's just, not going to take the wheel. He's not. Jesus... Jesus doesn't virgin. know how to drive. drive. Jesus, you're a virgin who can't drive. <laughs> oh, we're going to get comments. We're I'm, gonna, sorry, Mom. I'm sorry, Dad. We're going to be such a nice Catholic We're going to get fucking comments. <laughs> there are some schools of thought that say he wasn't a virgin at all. He married Mary Magdalene and the Holy Grail as a person. I don't know. But he didn't know how to drive. We can all agree on drive. that. He definitely could not drive. Jesus didn't have an Audi, all right? Nope. We've learned that if you manage to break the fuck out of jail, keep going. Yeah, don't go back. Because it's not going to get any better if you go back. You're no. making it. It's actually going to get worse if you go. If you get and out, it's go. It's easier for them to make it worse. Like, if you get caught, they're going to make it worse. Yes. But you don't have to help them. If if you get out of the prison, just go. Keep going. There is no outcome there that is going to be better, made better by going back. None. You, you won the game. We have learned if you challenge the wait staff at the Waffle House, they will rise to the occasion. They they do not need your shit, and they do not fuck around. We've learned that. Any manner of electrical testing that involves putting things in your mouth, probably not considered best practices. No, that's not in the manual. It's not. In, it's not. We've learned that that Saudi camel beauty beauty pageants are serious business, yo. That shit's serious. That is like some cutthroat shit when you're botoxing the fucking camels. A cutthroat business. And we've learned tonight, somewhere in Paris, by the grace of the Lord Almighty, there are four baboons out there who are destined to save the world. 
They're the four baboons of the apocalypse. They are going to save us all. They are going to no. fight crime. And they are going to 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 champion no. mankind. They're going to craft our doom. With giant red asses. The baboons of Paris. The baboons of the apocalypse. Would you let me have this one? <laughs>